Hey everyone, welcome to Dot Point A14, and today we're looking at investigating the complex interaction between the problem organism, the host, and the environment for one animal disease. So, what we need to do here is we need to look at the key thing, which is the interaction between these three things. So, first of all, number one, we have a problem organism. Number two, we have a host. And number three, we have an environment. And we need to do this for um, a named animal disease. And the one I'm going to do with you is fly strike. So once we finish this, uh, we need to remember what is called the disease triangle, which is basically how these things one, two, and three interact with each other to actually allow a disease um, to occur. So um, firstly here it says for this dot point, we need to investigate um, a disease that affects an animal and how the interaction between the host pest environment allows the disease to occur. Um, to make it easier across dot points, we're going to choose fly strike in sheep. Now, um, fly strike is caused by a um, insect pest. However, um, it is considered as a disease as um, the fly strike on the back of the sheep um, will in, will allow um, infection to occur. Um, and so, fly strike is considered a disease um, can, caused by a disease causing organism. And um, so, we're going to have a look at fly strike. So, first, we'll look quickly at the disease. Um, then, we'll look at the problem organism the environment and the host before we put it all together in the disease triangle. So to start with, um, once you've looked up fly strike, this is basically what fly strike is. Um, it's a disease where the Australian sheep blowfly, which we see here, um, known as Lucilia caprina, um, lays eggs and maggots eat the living flesh of the sheep. The open wounds on the hind or the breech or pizzle of the penis of the sheep can get infected and sheep can die from ammonia poisoning from the maggots. So um, it's, it's worth um, about 280 to $300 million a year in Australia. It costs that much um, in terms of the loss production, um, the sheep that die, um, the cost of chemical controls and stuff like that. So if you can remember um, 300 million, 280 to $300 million cost per year, and if, if sheep, um, lamb and wool is worth around $4 billion in Australia, roughly um, a bit more than that each year, we're talking um, 6, 7, 8% of um, the income of sheep is lost um, due to fly strike. So removing this problem is really important. So you can see here, um, this area at the back of the sheep here is known as the breech. Um, it just means, the, I guess, the bum area of the sheep. And um, the reason that this is particularly susceptible is because um, it is there, there gets a buildup of uh, feces and urine here. Um, there's folds of skin where the um, legs um, come in as well. And as, this, as the skin goes underneath, um, there's folds of skin in here, which are warm, um, moisture builds up, and the flies um, like that as an environment. So first of all, we're going to look at the problem organism, which here is the Australian sheep blowfly. Um, you really need to remember the word or the name for it here, the Latin name Lucilia caprina. Uh, if you can write that in, the, in an answer, that's excellent. Uh, so even if you can write L dot caprina um, uh, to shorten it, that's fine. But basically, it's a small shiny green fly. And Lucilia, Lucilia caprina is responsible for 90% of fly strike incidences in Australia. And so the flies lay eggs on dirty wool. The eggs hatch if the environment remains warm and moist. If it dries out, they die. So therefore, we need to con help uh, control it by making sure the environment is not warm and moist. And so they feed off weeping fluid from the sheep. All right, and the number two part of this, the environment. So all breeds are um, vulnerable to fly strike. However, the one we'll focus on mostly is merinos um, because merinos tend to have loose folds of skin. Um, more so than other breeds and they're more highly susceptible and we can see here um, an example of that so in this is um, merino at the top here is a, an example of a photo of a merino from 1905 and this uh, photo down the bottom is a more modern merino and you can see a uh, clear difference that in the last hundred years or so we've been breeding uh, merinos together to remove uh, the wrinkles and the, the skin folds that they have because these skin folds which were um, common on merinos and are still, um, are still in, in existence, not quite as bad. Um, they are really kind of hot spots where um, Lucilia caprina, the Australian sheep blowfly, would be able to lay um, its eggs and the maggots would feed off the flesh um, in all parts. Um, it's become more of an issue around the breach area now that um, the rest of the skin uh, on, a, on a sheep is fairly, uh, on a merino sheep, has um, not got as many wrinkles and folds as this one did, um, but it's still an issue around the breach area. So 
Basically, free, fleece rot, um, if the animal has fleece rot and it's not looked, looked after, it can increase the chance of fly strike. So the conditions or the environment where um, fly strike can occur um, includes wetting, wet fleece over a long period, steady rain, daily temps above 17 degrees Celsius, um, looser skin with folds and low wind speeds. And so those are the kind of environmental conditions that um, cause fly strike to occur, um, particularly on the breach area of merino sheep. So that's the environment. The third aspect of this is the host. So um, how susceptible are your sheep? And as it says here, susceptibility depends on environmental conditions as well as sheep type and management strategies. So these are some examples here of how um, you can stop sheep from being um, being at high risk to fly strike. Um, plain bodied sheep with not much wrinkles, not many wrinkles, um, lambs with low wrinkle, um, paddock monitoring and checking the sheep regularly is obviously gonna lead to a better case scenario where they don't get it as much However, a worst case scenario, the most likely host um, is a merino sheep, a highly wrinkled merino sheep, um, a hogget, which is a, a lamb um, after it's um, been weaned but before its first shearing, is um, has daggy if it has daggy um, wool at the back of its um, at the back of it at the breech area um, where there's feces build up and urine um, that leads to the flies um, uh, laying their eggs there. Um, and then flocks that have long wool, obviously, and ones that haven't been shorn or un uncrutched, um, haven't had the wool removed from the rear breech area here. And then sheep that are rarely monitored. Obviously, these um, animals in these conditions are going to be the ones that um, host the, um, the fly, the Lucilia caprina, that will end up causing fly strike. And so there's many options to help reduce fly strike, genetic options, um, etc. But we'll look at control options later. This dot point really is just about how these three interact with each other um, to allow the disease to occur. So here we have um, basically briefly summarized what hosts are generally susceptible. Generally merino sheep or animals that have loose skin um, or folds that create a warm and moist area which the flies thrive in. Um, animals that are poorly managed with the above conditions are particularly susceptible. So this is the really key point of the dot point here before we get into past questions. Um, the interaction between these three things and this is what we call the disease triangle so without a disease triangle uh, without these three things happening uh, you do not have the disease so you could wipe out fly strike you can see here we've written fly strike and that is the name of the disease that we have studied and um, if you didn't have the pathogen the sheep blowfly you would not have fly strike However, if you had that and you didn't have the merino sheep then, uh, or the one that's susceptible, you would not have fly strike. However, if you had both the sheep blowfly and a merino that was susceptible, but you didn't have um, the breech or pizzle area had um, lots of wrinkles, lots of wool, lots of um, feces build up, if you remove the environment, you also would not have fly strike. So you can see here this uh, three-sided triangle um, is known as the disease triangle because you need to have all three of these things to actually have a disease. And so whatever disease we put in here, whether it's bacterial or fungal or um, in this case fly strike, uh, whatever disease you place in this triangle, all you need to do to stop the disease from happening is to remove one single side of the triangle. Now of course you can remove more than one, but um, all you need to do is to remove one. So these three things all interact with each other to allow the disease to occur. So you have a susceptible sheep, you have the environment on that susceptible sheep, which is the right temperature, it has the right um, requirements such as um, moisture and um, feces, etc. And then you have the sheep blowfly, the Lucilia caprina that comes along and lays its eggs in there. And so you have this cycle, this disease triangle that occurs. Um, and because it's unbroken, um, you have fly strike occurring. Um, as mentioned, if you can get rid of one of these, you do not have fly strike any longer. And that is why it's called the disease triangle. So moving on to questions quickly. Um, in 2015, we had this question. So host, pest, and environment, or pathogen is another word for pest. Um, so the answer here is it's not time. Um, Vector is not one of them, and time is not one of them. So pathogen and environment are the two correct ones here to put on the disease triangle. The next one here, 2014, what name is given to organisms that cause disease? And the answer is pathogen. So vectors are things that um, that might act to pass on a disease, but they don't cause the disease. Pathogens are the actual things themselves that cause the disease. And in this case, that would be um, the Lucilia caprina. Uh, but this question is not specific to a disease. 
Um, 2008 here for an animal disease, complete the following table. And um, we put fly strike, the causes with Celia caprina, caprina, the Australian sheep blowfly. And symptoms for um, fly strike include, obviously, as we saw in the photo up here, um, things that are quite clear from this photo. The symptoms are um, open sores or a wound. Um, you have missing fleece clearly. And the sheep also stops eating when it gets fly strike. So those are some of the obvious symptoms of fly strike. And um, of course, death uh, can result in only a couple of days after a sheep um, contracts uh, or gets fly strike. Uh, this last question here is a format question from a while ago, 2008. The diagram illustrates the interaction of components um, involved in the development of pathogenic diseases. So of course, this is just showing you the disease triangle and we have host, pest or pathogen and environment. And so it's saying, how can a farmer use the information in this diagram to prevent or control a named disease? So clearly here you have to name a disease. Um, and it says, how will this information of the disease triangle help you to prevent or control it? Now we haven't learned about um, control methods yet, but we don't need to know about control methods or ways of controlling it yet to um, answer this question necessarily. Um, so for example, we just need to talk about removing one aspect of this triangle and then we need to talk about how it's relevant to a particular disease. So what I've gone on done is said fly strike is a disease in sheep which is caused by Lucilia caprina fly causing open wounds and infection. For this to occur you need all three aspects of the above triangle. So I've related to the above information in the diagram which it's asked for here. And you need all three aspects of the above triangle. You have hosts which is a sheep you have pathogen, which is Lucilia caprina, and you have the environment, which is warm, moist breach area. And you can see I've given a clear example here, um, a named in animal disease, and I've given, um, even in brackets here, I've put what those things are. Um, so it's clear that my example uh, is very specific. And so to finish off here for the for full marks, um, if a producer removes one of these things, um, the disease will not exist. So that's a really kind of clear answer to the question, how can a farmer use this diagram to prevent or control a named animal disease?